so welcome to all in this lecture number 12 of module 2 that is sanskar so friends in previous lectures we studied various formulations given in tradition that help us to live a harmonious life that help us to purify our sanskars today onwards in lecture number 12 13 and 14 we are going to discuss about sanskar culture and civilization so in these three lectures we will study how what is the importance of sanskar what is the importance of culture what is the importance of civilization and how are they interconnected so let's start from lecture number 12 sanskar so from in previous lectures we studied about development of right understanding development of right feelings right thoughts in myself and we also studied the process of purification of accumulated sanskars because my sanskars are going to reflect everywhere whether i am communicating to other whether i am interacting with other my sanskar are going to play a very important role whatever we think whatever we take decisions there is a very important role of sanskars so in this lecture we are going to study how a collective level efforts impacts individual sanskar and how individual sanskar is connected with the whole society this we are going to study in especially in this lecture lecture number 12 so let's start from sanskar so you must must have studied in uhv 2 and uhv 3 sanskar is the acceptance in my imagination acceptance of desire thought and expectation so basically sanskar means whatever is going on in my imagination all the time is sanskar so sanskar is basically all the acceptance in my desire thought and expectation is actually sanskar or in other words we can say whatever is going on in my imagination whatever i have given importance in my desire thought and expectation is basically a sanskar if we see present situation so presently it is a mixture of reality and some assumption so understanding of human reality universal invariant existential laws principles may ensure harmonious sanskars in us and parallelly we have drawn many conclusions from life experiences whether it align with existential laws or not but we have assumed something about that so both type of acceptance are in us so presently it has become a mixture of some beliefs and some reality so we can say what i am is largely our sanskar my tendency is my way of thinking is largely based on our sanskars our perspective our likes and dislikes our basis of decisions it is all because of our sanskar so if my sanskar are based on reality then my decision my feeling my thoughts are in harmony if my feeling thoughts are based on some assumption it may not ensure harmony in myself so under the influence of such assumptions my behavior my conduct my work may get influenced so if we see present situation and you can investigate it you can observe yourself whether your present sanskar are aligned with the reality coexistential laws coexistential principles or 
योर संस्कार आर ऑल्सो बेस्ड ऑन बिलीफ एजम्पन्स प्री कंडीशनिंग्स यू कैन ऑब्जर्व इन योर सेल्फ यू कैन इन्वेस्टिगेट इन योर सेल्फ नाउ दिस संस्कार कैन बी अपडेटेड ओवर टाइम एक्चुअली इट इट अपडेट्स ओवर टाइम तो संस्कार एट द मोमेंट ऑफ टी प्लस वन डिपेंड्स ऑन संस्कार एट दिस मोमेंट टी प्लस एनवायरमेंट एट दिस मोमेंट एंड सेल्फ एक्सप्लोरेशन एट दिस मोमेंट दिस कैन अपडेट माई संस्कार तो वॉट डज इट मीन इट मीन्स वॉट आई एम प्रेजेंटली ड्यू टू माई संस्कार एट दिस मोमेंट एंड आई हैव गॉट सम इन्वायरमेंट अराउंड मी If I start self exploration, if I start self exploration, if I investigate my sanskars, if I evaluate my sanskars, then my sanskar gets updated. So updation of sanskars are in my hand, and the this process of self exploration helps very much updating in my sanskar in right direction. it doesn't matter whether i have good environment or not if i am not exploring myself if i am i am not updating my sanskar then the influence of environment may continue for a moment but it cannot be sustainable for sustaining this sanskar for sustaining good feelings thought in me i have to start this process of self exploration so you have seen many people those who have good environment but qualitative shift is not in them why because they are not exploring themselves they are not evaluating their imagination desire thought and expectation so whatever you are receiving this time you accept it or you reject it whatever you take decision is because of your present sanskar so if my lecture my way my contents matches with your sanskar then you accept it easily if my contents does not match with your sanskar then you reject it immediately so that's why don't accept it don't reject it we are giving some content we are providing you environment keep exploring it investigating yourself after investigation if you find it according to coexistential laws keep it continuous otherwise you may reject it with this manner your sanskars are updated so updation of your sanskar are basically in your hand so as we self explore verify and understand our sanskar gets updated and if we talk about environment the culture civilization whatever is around us is actually a environment the issue is i am ready to self explore or not this you have to ask so sometimes you are in good environment sometimes you are not in good environment but the important point is whether i am ready to self explore myself whether i am ready to self investigate myself myself means my desire thought and expectation my imagination if i do this then my sanskars gets updated <clears throat> so there are basically two goals of this ceremonies if you observe your environment there are many rituals there are many ceremonies which are present in our culture so what is meaning of those functions what is meaning of those culture what is the meaning of different ceremonies which we enjoy in our life so it has two basic goals number one to develop our sanskars further from where we are now so you have seen many society activities around you through various festivals through various activities what is the purpose of those activities number 1 those activity may help you to develop your sanskars further 
एंड टू डेवलप द कॉमिटमेंट एंड कॉम्पिटेंस फॉर द रोल्स वी आर अबाउट टू प्ले सो द पर्पज ऑफ दीज सेरेमनीज सेरेमनीज मीन्स लाइक बर्थ सेरेमनी एजुकेशन सेरेमनी मैरिज सेरेमनी वॉट आर द इम्पॉर्टेंस ऑफ दीज सेरेमनीज इन माई लाइफ एक्चुअली दीज सेरेमनीज आर रिलेटेड टू आर संस्कार दीज सेरेमनीज कैन अपडेट आर संस्कार दीज सेरेमनीज आर हेल्प एस टू डेवलप आर कॉम्पिटेंस टू रिकग्नाइज आर रोल इन द सोसाइटीज सो देर आर वेरियस रिचुअल्स दैट ट्रांसफर देयर वे ऑफ थिंकिंग टू नेक्स्ट जनरेशन so when we follow any rituals what happens actually i get some guidance i get some ways to continue those thoughts those thinking so unknowingly it becomes our part and it continues generation by generation so what are those sanskars what are those events what are those ceremonies so we are going to study these ceremonies like gestation ceremony birth ceremony naming ceremony birthday ceremony education ceremony initiation ceremony profession ceremony marriage death ceremony so we are going to study the importance of these ceremony in updating my sanskar to remind me my role for the welfare of the society so basically now we will study all these ceremonies and their importance in making in updating my sanskar so let's study one by one so first is gestation ceremony ceremony for a to be father and mother to be parents so what does it mean why this ceremony is important for us so it basically remind the parents their responsibility because one human being which is actually a coexistence of self and body is coming is about to come in family so as a parents there are some responsibility which are expected to be fulfilled so this ceremony basically remind us those responsibilities because we are now parents and as a parents what i have to do for my child this ceremony remind us all these things so this has to ensure even the child is in the womb mother's womb so what can we do as a parents a conducive environment for the child sanskar we can create a conducive environment so that their sans uh, the child sanskar gets purified so to be purified of child sanskar a conducive environment is required so what are basic requirements for this number 1 the health of the body of the parents so number 1 as a parent we have to take care our body because we are going to take care of the body of coming child so it's necessary that our body as a parents is healthy so that we can take care of our child body number 2 the conduct of the parents it's very important because when the child takes birth he or she will start following you imitating you for that the conduct of parents must be conducive must be according to coexistential principles so that when following the parents the child starts ensuring harmony then feeling and thought of harmony in the parents and the family so it is another important point that feeling and thought of the parents should be in harmony so if we provide this environment for the child then the development of child then the sanskar of child starts updating 
this environment will help the child this environment will help to improve the competence of child to live in a harmonious manner so it is important of gestation ceremony let's see another birth ceremony so birth ceremony to ensure a conducive environment at the time of birth now the child has taken birth now it's a collective responsibility of everyone in the family to ensure a conducive environment for the child so for example my feeling as a parent my thoughts if are in harmony then it will help that child because child is start observing you so the way we talk the way we think child is going to imitate this so it is a responsibility of parent it is the responsibility of now every member of the family to ensure a conducive environment at the time of birth so for example as a parent i am living with feeling of trust with feeling of respect i am able to ensure harmony in myself i am living with the feeling of love and compassion all this have to ensure for the coming child so birth ceremony is basically a reminder that now the child has come and you have to ensure this conducive environment for the child so that he or she can live his or her life with coexistential principles with feeling of love with feeling of compassion that's why the birth ceremony is celebrated so next is naming ceremony what does it mean this ceremony is about naming a child so a name is essential to address the child so the name should be meaningful if name is meaningful then some at some ages child wants to know what is the name of meaning and uh, meaning of the name if the name of if the name is aligned with the harmony coexistential principle or it indicates some reality of this existence then knowing the meaning will help the child to know the reality at least he or she can pay attention towards the reality that is indicating by the name so while putting the name while giving a name to the child it is very important that the name should indicate a reality because very soon the child is going to ask you what is the meaning of my name and it if it is meaningful if indi it indicates some reality then child may pay attention towards that reality in fact not only child the other members may pay their friends may pay the reality may pay the attention towards the reality similarly birthday ceremony so this ceremony is to draw attention to human purpose the role of one sanskar its present status this all is a reminder at the time of birthday ceremony so relatives come to enjoy this birthday ceremony now it's a responsibility of relative to evaluate the sanskar of that child after one year then in second year then third in third year and they should commit to help do, that child so that their sanskar their conduct is improved so for example the target state of one sanskar the present state of one sanskar celebrate the development of one sanskar from last year to this year this all responsibility has to ensure from their relatives who are coming to celebrate this birthday ceremony and they should commit 
द चाइल्ड शुड कमिट द चाइल्ड शुड नो वॉट इज रिमेनिंग इन दियर संस्कार सो फैमिली फ्रेंड्स मेम्बर्स ऑफ द सोसाइटी मेक कमिटमेंट फॉर द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ द चाइल्ड डेवलपमेंट ऑफ द संस्कार ऑफ द चाइल्ड सो बाई दिस वे दिस सेरेमनी बिकम्स यूजफुल दिस सेरेमनी बिकम्स पर्पजफुल लेट्स मूव टूवर्ड्स एजुकेशन सेरेमनी इनिशिएशन सेरेमनी सो वॉट इज एजुकेशन सेरेमनी एजुकेशन सेरेमनी इज एट द बिगिनिंग ऑफ फॉर्मल एजुकेशन इट बेसिकली रिमाइंड्स वंस रोल टू द स्टूडेंट दैट यू आर गोइंग टू मेक एफर्ट इन द राइट विद द राइट अंडरस्टैंडिंग इन द राइट डायरेक्शन एंड द इनिशिएशन सेरेमनी कंडक्टेड एट द एंड ऑफ फॉर्मल एजुकेशन ड्रॉस अटेंशन टू अर राइट लिविंग ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ राइट अंडरस्टैंडिंग सो बेसिकली एजुकेशन सेरेमनी ड्रॉज अटेंशन टूवर्ड्स वेरियस एक्टिविटीज रिक्वायर टू डेवलप राइट अंडरस्टैंडिंग एंड इनिशिएशन सेरेमनी टूवर्ड्स लिविंग ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ राइट अंडरस्टैंडिंग सो बेसिकली इन दिस होल एजुकेशन प्रोसेस द स्टूडेंट वॉन्ट्स टू डेवलप हिज और हर राइट अंडरस्टैंडिंग सो एजुकेशन सेरेमनी बेसिकली पे अटेंशन towards the various activity through which the right understanding can be developed in child and once it is done so after the education now student is going to participate in the society the student is going to live in the society he or she is going to interact in the society so this ceremony reminds this responsibility that you are going to live in society now you have to live according to your right understanding right feeling okay so while in an education institution the main focus is on development of right understanding though it is a part of discipline of the education institution so after leaving the education institute one has to live on one's own right so if the education helps us the child to investigate themselves to explore themselves then he or she becomes aware of the innate faculty now he is ready to verify the things on the basis of his or his or her right understanding once he understand then he com- feels committed with right understanding living with right understanding so thus at the this stage the initiation ceremony to remind of this commitment to live with right understanding okay friends now let's understand profession ceremony in this ceremony attention is drawn towards the various aspects to be kept in mind while choosing a profession so now student is going to participate through some skill he is going to choose a profession so before choosing a profession he should have the feeling of prosperity he should know his role he should know about the four orders and part and and his participation in this four orders so this ceremony basically is to draw attention that now you are going to play a very important role in the society now you have to participate in ensuring the four comprehensive goals in the society it means right understanding in every individual prosperity in family fearlessness in society and coexistence with nature so you choose profession accordingly so that you may participate in one of those goals this is the basic purpose of profession ceremony now let's another marriage ceremony in this ceremony all those things necessary to live in harmony as a householder is required so we are going to live together there are some commitment there are some responsibilities there are some expectations which are to be fulfilled there are some expectation from the society that 
as a family member we have to fulfill this so this is a ceremony of reminding all those commitment and responsibilities okay then the last is death ceremony <clears throat> so what is the purpose of this ceremony the purpose is to be free of pain at the time of death so this ceremony updates our sanskars or this ceremony help us to pay attention that i am not the body i am only the self so that the person may free from the fear of the pain of living the body so this ceremony help us in this direction to become free of the sanskar related to our likes and dislikes so this ceremony help us to evaluate our likes and dislikes on the basis of reality so by this way this ceremony help us to get rid of to become free of our likes and dis dislikes and pay attention only on the other reality another purpose is to remind the self of its ongoing journey through development of sanskar continue with good sanskar and getting rid of the bad sanskars so this ceremony basically reminds us this ceremony basically tell us that you have to evaluate your sanskars that you have lived in your whole life and you have to evaluate what are the good sanskars what are the bad sanskar so that at the time of living this body you may continue with good sanskars so by this way this ceremony again help us to evaluate our sanskar to update our sanskar so let's sum up the whole lecture we have studied that sanskar means acceptance of desire thought and expectation all the time this is my sanskar what i have accepted in my desire thought and expectation important for me is actually my sanskar there are two basic goals of sanskar number 1 to develop our sanskar further from we are now and another one is to develop the commitment and competence for the roles that i have to play in the society and for this development there are various ceremonies in the society <clears throat> so basically this ceremony help us to develop our sanskar this ceremony is help us reminding our role this ceremony is tells us about our commitment for a harmonious society for a harmonious family i hope you have understood the importance of this ceremony in one sanskar so that's all from my side for this lecture now we will meet in lec next lecture and we will talk about culture thank you very much have a good day